Welcome to the next episode of Heavy Metal Minis. As promised, I uh, went ahead and did uh, six of the seven Plague Marines and got them basically finished. Um, had a lot of fun with these guys, putting some effects paints on there. We've got blood for the blood god all over the swords. We've got some Nilac Oxide and some brass. We, uh, I broke out the Nurgle's Rot, which if you can see, it's that green disgustingness there. Um, got some nice rust on the weapon. Uh, all in all, I, I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. Like I said, I would go ahead and play around with some things, see kind of what I liked, but that I would leave one uh, that we could do together. Didn't make any sense for me to start filming until I played around, so... This is uh, one of the models that I've already showed you, uh, the other steps, the, the base coating, um, again, base coated with Death World Forest, um, did some of the uh, Athonian camo shade in the recesses, and I used, what's the name of the paint, um, let me see, it's around here somewhere, uh, Ogren Camo, uh, I dry brushed a little bit to give some of the highlight colors, only other thing that I've done is I came through and I put a nice coat of black. It's still wet, as you can tell, on the gun. A nice coat of black uh, on the chain mail, a little bit up top, a couple spots on the back. Basically, thought process there, um, as we talked about in one of the videos with the Space Wolves. Um, anything I'm probably going to end up making silver, uh, I go ahead and put some black down. So why don't we do the rest of this model? Why don't we uh, we go through, uh, talk about uh, the other steps, uh, some other tricks I learned along the way. Um, admittedly, you know, I get some of these by I get some of the ideas and some of the tricks and how to do these uh, from YouTube videos. I get some of them from White Dwarf magazine, uh, and I get some of it from straight up uh, trial and error. So let's take a look. Uh, the first step that I like to do uh, before I I do much else is I'm going to come through here. And I'm going to start working on some of the metallics. Now, uh, in this one, I'm going to do the metallics uh, for one reason. Um, because I can get a lot of that done. And then we'll get into some of the other fun. So let's go ahead and do the metallics first. Uh, the very first of the metallics that I'm going to use um, is probably my favorite metallic on the market. This is uh, Warplock Bronze, a Citadel uh, paint. I'll tell you what I like about it. Um, as you can see, it's a base color, which as we've talked before, base colors are nice. They're thick. They stick. Um, and they do the trick. I'm just joking. I'm really not that lame. Um, the reason I use them, uh, you know, it's a thick color. It's going to sit there. It's going to do its job. And it's going to go where go where we put it, but it's also going to hold a little bit. Um, it's going to work for a nice base. Um, it's easy to build from... Okay, now, again, we talked about this in another another video. Uh, when I try to thin my metallics down, I don't like using water. I've never had much luck with it. So I'm going to use the thinner medium. Again, bought from Hobby Lobby at 40% off, so I got it 40% off at that price. Uh, use a thinner medium. Citadel makes them. Uh, this is the one that I like because this is the one that I found. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, go ahead and add a nice drop or so of that in there, uh, and thin this around. Remember, the point of a thinner medium is, pop quiz, what does it do? It helps thin your paints down, but unlike water, it doesn't dilute the color. Sometimes I care, sometimes I'm perfectly, I don't care, I'm perfectly happy using water in this case. Um, with metallics, it's a lot easier. So, some things that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put this. For example, right on the shoulders. Now, I am going to end up eventually covering this color. However, when I cover this color, having this base beneath it will work really nicely. For the same reason that I like to put strong coat of black underneath my silver... When I do gold or copper colors, having this bronze underneath will help. Now, you could also completely leave it 
as this bronze color, which on the Death Guard so far, I've done that in a few places. I have left it um, exactly the way it is on a couple of the bells. For example, when I do this guy, that big bell, it's going to stay that bronze color. Uh, I'm not going to put anything on top of it except for some nylac oxide, but we'll get into that when we get into that. Um, so first one, we're going to go around. We're going to do that part of the shoulder. We're going to come over here, do the same thing on the other side. Pretty easy. Nothing crazy there. Um, metallics work a little bit differently than other paints do. Like I said, I uh, my process for thinning them down is a little different. Again, that's my process for thinning them down. I'm not saying I invented it. I'm saying just the way I do it. I mean, there, there's probably other ways to do it. But that's the way that I thin them down with a little bit of thinner medium. Um, they can be a little more... Um, they can be a little more of a pain, and that's okay. Um, in this case... Um, this warp lock bronze works really well. It sticks, it holds, um, and it does what I want it to do. Now, got to get this bottom under here. That'll probably end up getting covered up as we get going along, but that's okay. Um, a couple other places that I'm going to go with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom of... The top and bottom of this knee pad and under here below the uh, above and below the boots. And yeah, that might be all that I do with the with the bronze this time. Um, again, perfectly acceptable. It's up to you, man. Do this however you want to do it. There's no there's no rules. You know, I uh, I talk to people about painting all the time. Um, I ask a lot of questions to other people that are much better painters than me, which is basically everybody. Um, but I have some, I also have some friends that ask me. We share experiences all the time. And one thing is, you know, I, I'm not going to tell you there's nothing you can do wrong because there are. I mean, painting with super thick paint, eh, you know, that is not going to, it's not going to cooperate with you. But um, there's a lot of right ways to go about this. Um, there's a lot of right ways. Sometimes at the end of the day, the best way to learn how to do something is trial and error. Sometimes someone shows you a good way to do something. Sometimes at the end of the day, it's just what works for you. And, um, you know, remember that I've seen, um, I've seen people do things one way and I've tried it and went, nope, that way doesn't work for me. Or, you know, I'm not that steady handed. I'm not that artistic. I can't draw that well. Um, so that doesn't work for me. Uh, so anyway, I've gone ahead and put that color on. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give that a minute to dry. And once it's dried, we're going to put uh, another layer on top, uh, change that color just a little bit. Then we'll move on with the rest of the metallics. Hang on, I'm gonna pause it for a second. When you come back, this is gonna be dry. And now it's dry. By the way, uh, I missed a couple of spots. I forgot uh, that little piece there and that piece back there. Also, while it, that was drying, I went ahead and uh, put some extra black over the base to get the, the base entirely black. Um, when I put the Death World Forest down, you know, I got a bunch on the base, kind of like you can see in the other models. So I just cleaned that up, took an opportunity to do that now. Any other color I get on there, it'll be... Um, Trivial and kind of most likely not something we're going to see. So the next step, uh, we're going to take a nice layer of paint, hash net copper, give it a good shake. Same process as before uh, with any of the metallics you're going to see me using. I'm going to take uh, a little right out from here. Um, one thing about these GW paints, I've ever mentioned it before, always get your paint from up here. That's why it's there. I mean, this this design actually serves a purpose. Um, I know a lot of people will say, well, its purpose is just to make sure you waste paint so you spend more money. Um, you know, I'm not saying that GW doesn't want you to buy more paints, but I think they want you to buy paint you're happy with, not so much paint that you're mad at. So um, th there's a design purpose there. One little drop, because I don't have much uh, drop of that. Thinner medium in here. Give it a nice mix around. 
And we're gonna go ahead and add a little of this hashnet copper. Now, a couple places I'm gonna point out here. Up on this emblem here, I'm only gonna put the copper over the skulls. Reason being, it'll add a highlight and you'll be able to see them better. Now in this case, I put too much medium. I can tell it's a little thinner than I wanted it to be. Guess what? It'll be okay, we'll fix it. So, gonna go ahead and add this hashnet copper right on top of just about everywhere that I put the warp lock bronze. Okay, now I'm not trying to put too much of this because I don't necessarily want it to have a completely copper color. I just wanna brighten up that bronze a little bit. So like I do with a lot of models, not trying to do a lot of colors, I'm not trying to do this perfectly. I'm trying to add it uh, to that copper and uh, make it look better. Again, I'll go ahead and continue that. Be right back, finish that up. We'll go to hit some silver. Okay, now that's done. Uh, one point thing I will point out, the only thing I didn't add it, the only other part I didn't add it to uh, is this little uh, pendant here. And there's a reason for that. It's because I'm going to put nylac oxide on it later. Um, not really because it, need it needs it, but more because I want to show you how to do that in the video. So we're going to do that. Next up, we're going to get some silver. We're going to put silver up here. Uh, we're going to put silver down here in the piping. We're going to highlight some silver on the gun and all on top of these chains here. So same process as with every metallic I use almost all the time. Again, natural steel. It's the darker of the steel colors. I don't use silver uh, unless I'm trying to do a highlight with it. Uh, silver tends to be harder to see. I know that sounds weird, but um, again, a drop. Can't really see it. A drop there. Mix it up with the thinner medium. Good. Got about the consistency I want. Uh, one thing about thinner medium, you know, always add a little bit, then go from there. Now, one of my favorite things to do, you put black down on top of this cha these chains, lightly brush it on there. Now, any area that it really saturates will look very silver. Any area that you just kind of dry brush it won't. In this situation, I want it kind of not completely consistent. Okay, so that will add that on there. We'll go ahead and add some silver around the gun. Um, and add some more points here. When I do guns, I like to do silver up here uh, on the front part here. And then anywhere else I wanna put silver is just kinda like, where do I want to be able to see, to see this better? Down here, same deal as before. Let's go ahead and add that, continue. And there we have it with the metallics, again. Uh, when I'm putting silver down, I like to uh, use a darker silver color, and I also like to put black underneath it. Uh, if you take a look, in some situations, in some parts, I let the silver saturate, and others I don't. Let it breathe a little bit. Gives a little bit more of a realistic look. Same with guns. Put some nice black on it. Get a little bit of silver in there. Add some silver in the back. Uh, a lot of the silver up top here and here, we're going to rust that up later, so it's going to look pretty cool. Uh, and for my bronze color, I start with uh, warp lock bronze, and uh, on top I put the uh, hash nut copper. That's the metallics. We're gonna move on to some other steps of the plague marines.